read two scriptures. We're going to read two scriptures, and I ask you to stand out of reverence for the word. Uh, this morning I have a word for you, and my word is entitled, Understanding the Blessing. Look at your neighbor and say, understanding, understanding the, blessing. the blessing. Amen. It's so important that you understand the blessing. It's part of your heritage and you must understand. And so we're going to read two scriptures and we're going to read Numbers, the 6th chapter, the 23rd to the 27th verse. And we're going to also read Ephesians 1 verses 3. So let's read them uh, together. Uh, ready? Read. The Lord bless you. And keep you. The Lord makes his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lifts up his countenance toward you and give you peace. Amen. I want you to also uh, see Ephesians 1 verses 3. And it reads, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly praises. Let us pray. Father God, Lord, in the name of Jesus, oh God, we thank you for your blessing upon us. We honor you, Lord God. We thank you right now, oh God, for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. We thank you for your word, oh God, that teaches us that indeed we are blessed. But Father, this morning we want to un understand the blessing that you have bestowed upon us. And Lord God, because Father, we recognize today, oh God, that we walk to and fro. <clears throat> but Lord God, we know, oh God, that many times, Lord God, we face trials and we face tribulations. And there are times that we don't feel blessed. But Lord God, we have to know that we are blessed. Yes, yes. And so Father, we give you thanks. We give you praise in Jesus' name. And we all said, Amen. Amen. As you're being seated, just touch two people and tell them, say, you're blessed. You're blessed. Yes, yes. Amen. One more time. Tell them, say, say I bless you. I bless you. I bless you. Amen. It's so important that you understand that you can bless. Yes. Bless somebody. Bless somebody. You, I want, once we get into the Word, you're going to get a chance to see that you're, you're issuing something. You're, you're yeah. depositing something in them. This morning, I want you to, to know that the, uh, uh, the Bible tells us of a, of, a, of a young man, the prodigal son. And he asked his father for his, uh, for his inheritance. Y'all heard that word, right? His inheritance. So, you are entitled... To e you are entitled to everything that your father has. Okay? So he asked his father for his inheritance. The father didn't know that. The father could have said, no, I don't think you're ready. Uh, no, but the father went forward and the father gave it to him. But he did not understand, tell your neighbor, understand the blessing. He did not understand the blessing. Dr. Miles Monroe, he, he made a statement and he yeah. said that if you don't know the purpose of a thing, that abuse is inevitable. You will abuse it. Amen? I want to take a moment to just shout, give a shout out to uh, Deacon Asaro Aloba. Deacon, thank you so much for ministering last week uh, for me. And I, I, I appreciate him being here. Amen. Part of the call is we have to respond when when we are when we're called. And uh, last Saturday I went to the hospital, uh, the rehab facility. I'm sorry to go and uh, be with my relative, and and uh, I got a call Sunday morning at 7:30 uh, that she had transitioned. And so and, and and I thank God that it is a home going ceremony. Y'all know what I said, right? A home going. Ceremony. Yeah, yeah. So I thank God thank for you, uh, those of you all that were here for your kind words. I want to thank you all Amen. for your texts. It meant a lot. Amen? Amen. Amen. But I want to take a moment now so that we can talk about understanding your blessing. The word blessed, if you, if you, the scripture that's up right now, if, if you notice that it has blessed and it has blessings. When we looked at uh, the other scripture, uh, in, 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 in Numbers, uh, that scripture had the word bless. Uh, this scripture has two other versions of the word bless. 
The other one was just B L E S S. This this is, has the E D bless, and also we see a uh, blessing. Now the 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 some form of the word bless is used over five hundred times in the Bible. Over five hundred times, some form of the word bless is used in the Bible. And I wonder whether it's because God wants us to understand not only the blessing, but our ability to also bless. Third turn your name and say, you have, you have the, ability the ability to bless somebody. To bless somebody. But I want you to see where did, where, where, where did this concept of blessing, what was the origin of it? We're going to turn and we're going to take a look at the book of beginnings. We're going to take a look at, at uh, Genesis. Uh, we're going to look at uh, Genesis, the first chapter, the uh, third through the fourth verse. We're going to walk through Genesis. Then we're going to look at 9 and 10, then 11 and 12. But I want you to see something. In the book of Genesis, the third chapter, and notice it says, Then God said, okay, then God did what? Said. Then God said, let there be light, and there was what? Light. There was light. And what the next scripture starts off with, God saw. See, God said, and God saw, okay, the light. He spoke it, and it happened. He spoke it, and it happened. He spoke it, and it happened. It's so important that we, when we go to God, we go to God and understanding that all God has to do is just speak. All God has to do is just what? Speak. To speak. So he said, God spoke it, and God saw. And watch what it says. And that it was what? Good. good. That it was good. Now I want you to look at this. Thing. You're going to see this exact same pattern on several other scriptures. Let's go ahead on and bring up the other scripture also. The ninth verse, it says, Then God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together in one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was what? So. It was so. Because when God speaks, it has to what? Obey. It has to happen. Everything has to obey. Yes. Everything has to obey. And God called the dry land earth, and gathered it together, I'm sorry, and gathering together of the waters, and he called seas, and God saw that it was good. But notice the pattern. In one scripture, God said, and the other scripture, God saw. Yes. Uh -huh. But not only did God see what he said, but he also said that it's good. Yes. Tell your neighbor, it's good. It's good. Amen. So I wanted you to, to see this pattern. At the end of his creation, in every day, over the seven days, I'm sorry, over the six days, God did something, did some different, other form of creation. Whether it's the waters, whether it's the skies, whether it's whatever. And at the end of that day, when he looked at what he did, and he said, man, that's really good. Okay? That is good. Okay. Uh, we're going to look at 11 and 12. Also, you're going to see the same pattern. 11 and 12 starts off with, then God said, and 12 ends with, and God saw yes. that it was good. Y'all see that, right? Yes. He said it, he saw it, that it was good. I think you're getting the pattern. Now we're going to go to 14. 14 and 18. I want you to see this also. 14 and 18. It'll be the exact same pattern. I want to get into this. I want you to see something. 14 and 18 says the exact same pattern. I don't think she has it. Uh, uh, let's jump down to uh, Genesis 20. We're going to look at 1 verse 20 through 22. Amen. Genesis 1, verses 20 through 22. Amen. All right, here we go. All right, so then just take my word for it, that in Genesis, the first chapter, verse 20, uh, it reads, Then God said, uh, it starts off with God, God speaking, and God said, uh, Genesis 1, 21 starts off with, And God saw that it was good. The thing that God saw was that it was good. Uh, just bear with them. They're having, we're, we're recovering from some technical difficulties, but we're getting our, our technology back going. Uh, Genesis, but Genesis 1.22, and this is the key thing. 
This after God gets through making everything on the sixth day. After he gets through making everything, and everything, at the end of every day he's saying, he, it's good, it was good, it was good. But now watch this now. In verse 22 it says, and God blessed them. But wait, wasn't it good? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. It was good already, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. But in addition to it being good, watch what God did. God did what? Bless. 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 He didn't leave it. He, he, did, he did not leave it alone as just being just being good. Now I'm going to say something in its perfect, unhindered form. The way that He made it, He blessed it. Are you are you with me? Yes. Okay, we're going somewhere with this because I want you. I want to bring it to you. I want to bring it to you. Okay. Uh, the word bless. Let's let's talk about the word bless. So this is the first time the word we see the word bless. The word bless comes from the word barak in the Hebrew. Okay? Barak mm -hmm. in the Hebrew. And uh, uh, it, it, it also originates from the word uh, eulogio in the Greek. So in the Old Testament, it's barak. But now barak means on bended knees. Oh, that's kind of interesting. Wow. Barak means on bended knees. And do you know that whenever it is that you went for a blessing, what did, you, what did the person being blessed have to do? Bend their knees. They had to bend their knees. Yes. Yes. They had to get down. Jesus. They had to bend their knees. Because yes, huh? I'm coming for something. Jesus. It's almost like ladies, you know, when he comes to you and he says he loves you, yes. and he wants to marry you, at some yes. point he has to get down on yes. One knee, right, Brother Lamar? Amen. <laughs> Gotta get down on one knee. Brother Lamar said, Oh Lord, what happened? <laughs> he got down on one knee. <laughs> <That's all. laughs> okay, alright, so uh so it, it but let me let me let me talk about about uh several different ways that the word bless is used in the Bible. Could we talk about that? Yes. Several and, and I want to tell you four ways. The first way is, as you saw already uh, in the book of Genesis, where God blessed his creation, he blessed uh, his, the animals, he blessed the sky, he even blessed man. Because after God created Adam and Eve, he also blessed. Yes. Because don't forget, Adam and Eve was part of another form of creation, right? And so he blessed it. Say bless. 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 All right. God also did something. God, God, on the seventh day, he rested. Because you say, Pastor, how come it's, it's only six blessings? How come he, he said it's good only six times? Because on the seventh day, God rested, but then God blessed the Sabbath. Say, bless, bless. The, Sabbath. the Sabbath. God blessed the Sabbath. Amen. So, the second, the second way that, uh, that, that you can use a, the word bless uh, and we're going to turn to Psalm 103. Psalm 103, verses 1 through 3. And uh, most of you all probably know this. This verse is a very familiar verse. And it says, Bless the Lord. Read it with me. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and what? And forget not his, all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities? Who heals all your diseases? Uh, look at your, look at somebody and say you're blessed. You're blessed. So this scripture is telling you that you're blessed because because you know uh, I'm sorry. This scripture is encouraging you. I'm sorry to bless God. Amen. This scripture is encouraging you to bless God because of what He has done. He's the one that forgave your all of your iniquities. He's the one that, uh, that, 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 that have all these benefits. He's the one that heal all of your diseases. Yeah. Amen? Amen? So this scripture is encouraging the worshiper to bless God. Yes. Well, you say, how do, we, how do we bless God? By opening up your mouth. Yes. Mm -hmm. Opening up your mouth. Yes. God, I bless you. God, I thank yes. you. God, I praise you. Yes. God, you are amazing. Yes. Yes. God, you are amazing. That's why, let me, let me tell you all something. And, and, and I don't know if you all heard what was said regarding the attacks that happened this week. This week in this house. This week. 
Amen. On our praise team this week. And and one of the things that was being said was, was we could have had five funerals. That's what Pastor Eden said. So when, when, when you look at the fact that we could have had five funerals, but we didn't, you just you just don't go on and, 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 and live life and carry on. No, you stop and you do what? You praise his name. You thank him. That's why if, if you guys are continue praising, if you guys are continue praising, I would just say nothing. Some people that didn't get blessed. My God. My God. My God. Some people that didn't walk away from the car accident. That's right. Yeah. Some people that, that got paralyzed. My God, my God. Some people that had to get cut out of cars. My God, my God. My God. But my Bible says that no weapon. No weapon. Formed against you. Formed against you. Brother Edward, formed against you. Brother Dory, formed against you. No weapon, Sister Ashley, formed against you. So what? It didn't say it won't form. You see, it has to form to cause you to move. It has to form to, 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 to cause you to change your confession. But my Bible says no, no way. That's part of your heritage. Look at somebody say, that's my heritage. That, it, that's like that. That's like your last name. You can't, you can't change it, no matter how you feel. My God, my God. Your last name is your last name. Whether you got money in the bank, whether you don't, whether the bills are due. No matter what, your, your last name won't change. So God says that you're mine. And he also says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I don't know if any of you all have ever, ever had an experience in your families where you either heard or somebody did it to you. You disappointed them so much that this day they disowned you. I've heard that said in my family. But God said, I'll never. You belong to me. I'll never. I'll never. I'll never disown you. And that's why it's like no matter what we do, we come to him and we say, God, forgive us. And he forgives us. Mm. I'm forgiving you all. I stand before you as being one that is forgiven. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm forgiven too. Oh yeah. Mm. I want you to look at take a look at something. The, the third way, the third way of, of the form of a blessing of, in the Bible. So the first way we said was we see when God bless uh when God bless his creation, God bless mankind, God bless the Sabbath, and God bless men. The second way we see the word blessed is that when we are encouraged to bless God. We see that a lot in the Psalms. The third way is when godly men, by words and actions, bestow blessings on each other. Y'all know what I said? When godly men, or women, uh -huh, bestow words and actions on each other. I want you to see something. We're going to take a look at 1 Peter, the third chapter, and the eighth verse. It doesn't have nothing to do with whether you are perfect. It doesn't have anything to do with whether you are ordained or not. But watch this. 1 Peter, the third chapter, the eighth verse. Finally, all of you, say all of you. All of you. Amen. Be of one mind. Having compassion for one another, love as what? Brothers, Brothers be tender-hearted, yes. be courteous, yes. not returning evil for evil or reviling for reviling, yes. but on the contrary, blessing. 
What that means is that instead of instead of giving somebody evil for when they do wrong to you, you go ahead on and you bless. Y'all see that blessing? You were called to what? I want you to see it. Some of you all got your eyes down. It's like now you said, hey, I left you a thousand dollars and you all are down. And you all are and after you get up and you walk out that door, you ain't gonna know that you got a thousand dollars. This thing says that knowing that you were called to do this, knowing that you were called to do this, why? That you may inherit a blessing. Yes, yes, yes. The things in God are different from the things in <laughs> from the natural laws. God says, forgive that you may be forgiven. God says, bless so that you may be what? Blessed. I hope somebody's getting it. Yes, we yeah. are. I hope somebody's getting it. Yes, we are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The fourth way that blessings are used in the Bible is that when godly men or women under the inspiration spoke a prophetic blessing. Now, I don't know if we have several ministers in the house that operates in the prophetic, and I thank God for them. You know when a person speaks under the prophetic because nobody tells nobody your business, and all of a sudden they start telling you, thus says the Lord, and that says the Lord, and you know that it had to have been somebody that knew you, that was all up in your Kool-Aid. And that prophet just spoke what God told them. Yeah. Amen? All they said was what God told them. Yeah. So that happens, and we see it happen in the Bible. A prophetic word was spoken over me. And I would later on get an opportunity to, to be blessed by having a relationship with this particular prophet. Oh, goodness. It must have been over 20 years ago. I attended this women's conference. No, let me back up a little bit. So, I got hurt by church. And I didn't want to have nothing to do with church. Anybody ever been there? And uh, so, of course, I thank God that for Pastor Yvonne Strong, and I'll give her her kudos, she, uh, she knew that I had been hurt by church. And one of the things that she would do is she would just come and just check on me. She didn't, wouldn't come with scripture. She wouldn't come with, thus says the Lord. She wouldn't come with, you know you in a backslidden state. You know you need to get... The, but she just came as a sister in the Lord. Yes. Just came as a mother in the Lord. Yes. Just comforting me and my wife. Yes. And so one day she invited us to this... Women's prayer breakfast. Yes. And so I figured, okay, I'm not doing anything that Saturday morning. I'll go to the prayer breakfast also. Amen. Now, I've been in church long enough. I know about the move of God. And so, of course, if uh, people, if there was the, the healing service, people uh, were, were, were being healed. So I'm a gentleman. I'm one of maybe three men that's in the audience. So I came up to just assist. Yes. I didn't come up for prayer. All I came to do was to assist. Amen. Amen. But God knows your heart. God knows your state. God knows your thoughts, your very thoughts. Yes, he sure does. So I go, I, I assist. And when I got through assisting, at the, when the last person was spoken to, I turned around to go to my chair. Yes. And the woman of God spoke to me. And she says, young man, I, I turned around. I was like, like me, like, like you, like you know. I didn't come up for prayer. I just came to help you. Yes. See, you think you're helping God, but you, you don't help God. Yes. Nobody can help God. Yes. Little that I knew was that what I was doing was that I was sowing for something for me, but I thought I was helping her, and I would have been content with walking away with just helping her. So she called me up and she said, watch this now. She don't even know that I'm married. Okay. 
Jesus. She said, come up here with your wife. Jesus. Because just because a man and a woman is sitting together, that don't mean they're married. Okay? She said, come up here with your wife. And we came up, and she spoke some prophetic words into, into my life. And, 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 and she said that your name is going to change from today forward. Jesus. Ooh. Ooh. Powerful words, right? Yes, yes. And then she also prophesied back then this ministry over 20 years ago. Jesus. You're going to be a pastor. And God called you and you and your wife are going to be in ministry together. Jesus. We were not in ministry together. I didn't want to have nothing to do with the church. I, I wanted to go as far from the church as possible. I got hurt by the church. So I don't want to be affiliated with no church. But when the word of God comes to you, yeah. it finds good place in your spirit. And, and, and you would be you would be so wrong to ignore when the word of God comes to you. There are times words I've heard prophetic words come to, to some in, 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 in here. And when the word prophetic word comes and it's a word of warning. And all that all God doing doing is showing mercy. Yes. I'm telling you to change your ways. Change your walk. Yes, yes. So I thank God for the prophetic. Amen? Amen. Put your hands together for the Lord. <laughs> and so so under the so so the the other way that the fourth way I stated that that uh, godly men were inspired to speak prophetic blessings over their children. I just want to give you some examples. And you would know this. Amen. Noah blessed Japheth and Shem. Isaac blessed, oh, I forgot one, right? Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau. How come I didn't say Abraham blessed Isaac, right? You can't leave that one out. Uh, but then watch something. Because every time the blessing comes out, the father is only blessing his children. The father is only blessing his children. The father is blessing his children. There are times we go through things in life and we think we understand life. And we don't understand. I remember my dad used to do something. And we would be at formal events. And my, my dad would point us out, each of them, his children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. And he would call them out, but he would call them his name. He would say, that's Daniel, that's Daniel, that's Daniel. And I didn't understand what dad was doing. But one of the things that Jacob did, Abraham blessed Isaac because he only got one son, right? Yes. The blessing was through Isaac, yes. not through Ishmael. Just go along with this. Isaac blessed his two sons. Jacob, realizing that this thing is in me, I have the blessing. I got 12. And they have children. An entire nation came from each of them. So what do I do? Do I only bless the twelve? What about the daughters? Jacob blessed the entire nation of Israel. And that blessing stands until today. He blessed the entire nation. I'm trying to show you the power of the blessing. So in your in your when you came to God. As I was ministering, that, that thing just resonated so much to me, with me, because I realized something. I realized that that my that is what my dad was doing. When dad would say, that's Daniel, that's Daniel. Jacob recognized that, oh my God, I need to speak blessings over this one. But you know what? Before I die, I can't get, because there was millions of them, I can't bring each of them into the house and one by one issue a blessing. So you know what he did? He blessed all of them. He blessed all of them at the same time. Amen? Amen. Amen. I hope somebody Amen. got that. Y'all getting that? Yeah. Yeah. Ladies, this is what that means. That means that you can speak blessings also. Yeah. 
Mm. I live in a predominantly Jewish neighborhood. And Monday that just went by, a lot of us was out of school, our kids were out of school, but they considered that their, their, uh, that was one of their holiest days. But you know what they do? They go back and they recount what the God had done for them. And they leave the comforts of their homes. And they live on, or they spend the night on the inside of like a wooden shed that a man made, that they made. Like a little tent outside their houses. And they'll go in there and they'll talk about the blessings of God. They'll issue blessings upon their children and their family. And they'll talk about what God has done. It's so important that we understand. Now, 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 if, 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 you were to, if you were to put one of them in a room and you put, gave them a, a lie detector and asked them, are you blessed? Are you, are you sure you're blessed? Are you blessed? One of the things that they would be able to do is they would be able to go back and recount that, that I, my, my father is this person and his father is that person and his father is that person. And what they would be able to do is they would be able to tell you a lineage of people that are considered blessed. Now, a lot of us, we don't have that opportunity. We don't have that lineage to be able to go back and say, well, my grandmother was this person and my grandfather was that person and that person and so on and so forth. But what God has done in our lives is that God says, though your sins be as scarlet, I'll make you white as snow. God says that with loving kindness, he drew us, right? But when he drew us, then when we, when we got saved, all of a sudden he changed our DNA. He came in and made his abode on the inside of us. And from that point, we are blessed. Amen. Amen. Now, here's the thing. When, 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 when Jacob blesses, when Abraham blesses, when Isaac blesses, they bless from something that's on the inside of them. And so that's why God said that I've hid in these earthen vessels. My, 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 my. God hid something on the inside of you yes, the minute my God. you got saved. Yes, Jesus. Change your DNA. Thank you, Jesus. Things that may be in your bloodline, things that might have happened uh, 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 to, to others in your family, but because now you have a different, a little, a little just a little change in your DNA, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. it won't happen to you. Mm-hmm. Tell your neighbor, it won't happen to you. Thank yeah, it won't happen to you Thank because now and so now when you bless, when you bless, mm-hmm. you're blessing from that substance down on the inside of you that don't belong to you. See, you have to know that you have to know that it's there. My sermon is entitled Understanding the Blessing. I can't tell you all how many times I'm down kneeling, praying in the morning. And you know how sometimes you go to bed at night and you're fine and you wake up in the morning And guess what? You don't feel well when you wake up? Mm -hmm. I can't tell you all how many times I laid hands on myself. I laid hands on myself. 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 It was nobody around. I laid hands on myself. So what am I doing? I'm coming from that thing that God placed there. This shell might be sickly, but I know that there's something that will never get sick. Thank you, Jesus. I got it. I got it. I know that there is something that can touch God. Because it belongs to Him. He put it on the inside of me. And so guess what? I lay hands on myself. And before you know it, I'm up. I'm taking a bath. I'm getting going. I'm going to work. And, and nobody, nobody even knows. Oh, Daddy didn't feel good today. Pastor didn't feel good today. No, nobody knows it. But I know... And that's why when God sends me to hospitals, a lot of times is at the end of the day. A lot of times is on a Sunday after I preach. And physically, I don't feel like going. Physically, I don't feel like taking another step. I just want to go and sit down somewhere. But I know that the power is not of me, and it's of God. Yes, yes, it is. 
uh, I went to go and visit somebody at the hospital. And I thought that the person that I went to go and see was the person that I was going to pray for, Pastor. After I got to praying for that person, and I'm leaving, and there's a mother and her son, and their loved one had just passed away. The little boy was just there crying, just crying, crying, just falling, and crying. And the grief was so thick. And I asked the lady, I said, I said, ma'am, do you mind if I pray for you? I just got through praying for my, my friends. And I said, do you? I, I didn't tell her that, but I'm thinking, okay, you know what? God, this is why. This is why you sent me. Yes. See, that other person, the doctor's still working on them. Mm -hmm. yes. They're still alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, their family, most of their family ain't even here. Jesus. But this one here is going through so much. Yes. Their family will never come back home. My God. Jesus. This is why you sent me. Yes. And so I realized that I got to do something, and it won't come from this, but it will come from the inside. Amen. Tell your neighbor, you have something on the inside. Do you know that there is somebody that you need to bless, some people that you need to bless, that you're the only one that can bless them? So you can't hold back on those words. You have to speak it. Mothers, single moms, you all may be in a place where there is no father. Speak those blessings over those sons. Yes. Speak those blessings over those daughters. My God. My God. Speak those blessings over your children. Yes. Yes. That's it. Men, speak blessings over your wives. My God. Speak blessings over your families. God will honor your word. Yes. Because your word comes from that place that was perfect. Jesus. Okay, okay. All right, so inanimate objects. God created the stars, the moon, the this, the that. He looked at it. He said it's good. An inanimate object, he blessed it in its perfect state. You get saved, though your sins be as scarlet, he washed you, make you white as snow. In your perfect state, guess what he did? He came and he also blessed you. Jesus. He blessed you. Yes, he did. And so from that place, from that place, and it has nothing to do with how good you've been. It has nothing to do with how much money you got. It has nothing to do with your skin color. It has everything to do with the power of God. And so God comes in and God does a new thing. Look at your neighbor and say, he's, he's, done, he's done a new thing in me. Oh yeah, God has done a new thing in you. Give me 10 minutes, family. Are you being blessed? Oh, God is so good. Hallelujah. God is so good. Just bear with me. I'm getting used to technology. I thank God for technology. You know, as I as I as I uh, uh, studied this, and, and, and why is it important for us to understand the blessing? It's important for us to understand the blessing because when we understand the blessing, we understand two things. We understand that he loves us and we understand that it don't just it's not just for us. Okay. I'm gonna go back to nature again. I'm gonna go back to creation. When God blessed it, the blessing that God okay, whom God blessed, no man can curse. So when God God look at it, he said it's good. Okay, so you make something, oh you know what? Today is good. It's painted well, it looks good, everything is perfect, right? It looks good. But then when he blessed it, that blessing permeates time. Ooh, wow. mm -hmm. I think somebody's going to get it now. Mm -hmm. So that thing remains what? Blessed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So when God blesses you, you remain what? Blessed. You remain blessed. But you know what, family? It's just like the oil. The blessing ain't for you, boo. It ain't just for you, boo. 